A group of young men called the Sons of the Prophets wanted the prophet Elisha to take them over to Jordan. They told him, the place where we are isn't big enough for us, so let's go to Jordan and take beams and build a bigger lodging. So Elisha went along, and one day, one of those men, as he chopped down a tree, his axe head fell into the Jordan River. Alas, he cried out to Elisha. My axe head has fallen in the river, and it's borrowed. So Elisha asked that servant, where did the axe head fall? And Elisha took a branch from a tree, threw that in the water, and the axe head swam to the top of the water. Elisha told the young man that you could take it out of the water now. Friend, do you believe in the miraculous power of God? Now, if you don't believe that story, if you don't think that God has enough power to float an axe head, then what in the world are you going to do? Let's talk about this. Are you okay, friend? Are you sleeping with the light on at night? Are you troubled deep down in your soul about what the future might hold? Because the world is in a mess right now with a lot of crazy people doing nasty sins to others. The Bible says the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17 verse 9. And it seems like the worst of the lot gets put in charge in our world. What kind of security is there in this present darkness in which we live? Here's another story from 2 Kings chapter 6. The king of Syria is a bad guy, and he's after Israel. He's been chasing them for some time. Well, Elisha is his trouble. Elisha, the prophet of God, keeps telling the king of Israel the battle plans of the king of Syria. One of his servants has told the king of Syria, the problem you have is that Elisha is telling the king of Israel what you say in your bedchamber at night. And so plan A then for Syria is to kill Elisha. So out they go in an army, 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 13. Here we go. And he said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he their horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And so Dothan, where Elisha is, gets surrounded in the nighttime by the great armies of Syria. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, And gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? The servant uses the very same Hebrew word in his distress that the other person used when the axe head fell in the water. In the English, it's alas. But in the Hebrew, it's a word, aha, So he says, Aha, Master, look, they have surrounded the city where we are. What in the world can we do? This man is scared to death. Put yourself in his place. You've gotten up early in the morning. You've gone outside the tent for a look around. And as you stretch and yawn, you look, and there is a horse and a soldier on top of the mountain. And as your eyes follow the horizon all the way around the city is an army on horseback. We're surrounded, Master. Is this the end? Well, Elisha knows this is no problem at all, and he tells the servant that there are more with us than there are who are against us. That's in verse number 16. In verse 17, the Bible says, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. 
And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Is that good? So there were more angels and chariots of fire and God's own horses around them than there were in the whole army of Syria. What a great story. And it has a lot to do with where we are today. Do you see the current problems and the darkness that we live in and the bad news? It seems we get blindsided every day by some new, horrible, strange thing that's never happened before. But do you see God in all of it? Is he your answer? Is God your security? Now, people often wonder why God doesn't make their axe heads float today. Well, miracles come and go in periods. My friend, Bill Fallon, charted the miracles of the Bible, and he shows the active periods go up and down in cycles as God moves in the world. Sort of like the temperature does globally, goes up and down, can't really do anything to change it, just goes up and down. You have to live in the period in which you live. But make no mistake, friend, if you believe in Jesus today, let not your heart be troubled. God is in charge. If God is at the control panel of the universe and God loves you, it's going to be okay. I just want to remind you today that God is in control. I know things are crazy in the world because, see, it's in this world that we continue to deny God, usually the heads of governments. But the history of the world says that the heads of governments take their eyes off God. Ultimately, they just erase God from the picture and put themselves in charge, or at least they think. And down goes another kingdom. That's the way it goes in the history of the world. But friend, just because God isn't making your axe head float today doesn't mean that he's not in control. It's just that we happen to be in a period here in the age of grace in the world, or we call it the church age, that God doesn't find it necessary to do miracles openly like making axe heads float. God has already told us in his word, the big news is that Jesus has died on the cross. The big command from God, what he wants everyone to do is change their minds about him who don't believe, to rest their faith in him. And in particular, God expects all men everywhere to believe in Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. That's the command of God. And he promised us that his action is going to be to save everyone who believes in Jesus. And he's going to gift them. He's going to make them a part of his family. And he's going to use them to reach other people. And that this church is going to have its great run in the world as the communication of God. And God has promised that in the end of the church, there's going to be this great event called the rapture. That rapture is the next big thing of God. So do you see how it would be sort of condescending just to simply make an axe head float? Now, you could go ahead and pray. I do pray for a miracle in various situations. It's fine. God can do anything God wants to do any time he gets ready. But the period we're living in is already charted for us. It's cut and dried, the things that God is doing. He is working in the world today to cause people to believe in Jesus Christ. That's God's business, and he's going to come and rapture the church away. Now, I know, I know, it's so dark. It's more likely today that a senior military officer will tell us that it might be little green men than it is to tell you that God is real and is there to help us through a crisis. When men don't have faith in God, in fact, when men outlaw God, when men try and make it illegal to even talk about God, 
who imagine all kinds of weirdo scenarios like little green men. Isn't that sad? But friend, I don't know what I would do to face the future if I didn't have full faith in Jesus Christ that he holds it and it's going to be okay. I know that the one that can float an axe head won't break his promise to be my shepherd through thick and thin. And if you're a believer in Jesus, the same promises are yours in the Bible. They all are still amen for the believer. Through thick and thin, through losing or winning, God has our back. He promised in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So whatever it is that you're going through today, friend, whatever problem is pressing your heart right now, it's not bigger than the promises of God nor his presence. He'll be with you, believing child of God, and you can overcome this world through faith in him. And in the end, he's coming back. Friend, aren't you glad for that hope that we have and the comfort that we have when we talk about the rapture of the believers? I know he's coming back, friend. These current problems that we're having are only a little message to us in the world that we're a little bit closer to the rapture of the church. Now, could I spend a few moments, friend? Maybe you don't have faith. Maybe believing in miracles has always been a hard thing for you, but I want to tell you, if you don't have faith, you should, in fact, be very afraid because this world is hurtling towards a place of trying its very best to be without God. And without God, there is only darkness and separation and death and condemnation. This world left to itself, make no mistake, will destroy itself. All those men whose hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, they will over time consume themselves with their own lust and greed without the intervention of God. So could I ask you today to reconsider your faith in Him? Isn't it amazing, truly amazing, that some people are more likely to believe that there are space aliens than to believe in God. But what a load of evidence God has given us in the reality of God, in the creation that he made, and in the word of God that he's given to us. 66 books together, the all-time worldwide bestseller book given by God as he led men to write under his inspiration. Friend, you can believe in him if only you will. Now here's what he's done for you. He loves you just the way you are. He knows everything wrong that we've ever done and he loves us still. Now I know we're not that way. That's just not the way our love works. But it's the nature of God. It's the attribute of God to love you. And he loves you before you do anything for him. And he's proven his love in this. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's John 3, 16. When the Bible says that God gave his only son, that's what he means about Jesus dying on the cross. Our sin payment was death. That's our penalty, but Jesus paid it for you. He says you'd have everlasting life if you put your faith in Jesus Christ.